Hey, I'm Leo Mann. I am the co-founder of The Football Blacklist and a sports consultant, and you're watching Factory 78. Okay, tell us about Football Blacklist Awards. Yeah, the, 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 the Football Blacklist is um, a celebration of the black community, is in those of African and Caribbean heritage, um, people who are... Um, in largely in the UK, although we have some people outside of the UK who have made the list in the last couple of years. Um, and it's all around context, because in the Premier League, um, in men's football, 43% of players um, are black. Okay. However, when you look outside of the players, in terms of representation, there's very few coaches and managers um, across the Premier League um, and across the EFL leagues. There's one black board member across all 20 Premier League clubs. Um, there's underrepresentation in every area of the game outside of playing in the men's game. Mm. Um, so for me, that's a problem um, because I think, well, why is that? Why are we good enough to be entertainers, good enough to be players, but not considered or given the opportunities to lead and be leaders in the various areas? So, um, so for me, I created the football blacklist with Rodney Hines, the editor of the um, um, the Voice yeah, newspaper yeah. sports um, section. Brilliant, brilliant guy. We kind of founded the football blacklist together, um, and we wanted to shine a light first and foremost on the brilliant people in the community, brilliant mm. people working across football. Um, but we also wanted to create um, an opportunity for the football industry to self-reflect and look at these brilliant people, um, but also think about why the underrepresentation exists within their businesses, within their industry. Um, and then thirdly, almost, you know, most importantly for me in many ways, um, is we wanted to make these brilliant people more visible to the next generation of young black people. Okay. So if you're a young black girl from Brixton, um, going to school and living around here, and you love football, but you might not make it as a footballer or that might not be your ambition and you're really talented in terms of you might be an incredible mathematician, for example, but you love football and you want to work in football, then you can go, oh, I've seen on the football blacklist there's a black woman who's head of finance for Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. I can go on and do a job in that space because I see someone like me from my community that I can go and follow. And and I think we can do that in every single area of the game. Because when we look at why do we have so many black footballers, why do we have so many prominent black musicians, I believe firmly that's because generations before have seen people they can aspire to. So let's make our chief executives more visible. Let's make our chairman, let's make our people working in the community more visible. Because if we can do that, then we are potentially then harvesting the next generation of leaders from black communities to take their place rightfully within the sport and improve the football industry. So when is it going to be another Blacklist Award? Well, tw 21st of March, so it's coming up just in two oh. weeks. Um, oh, okay. So just around the corner, oh, cool. we've got our um, um, event at the um, Battersea Arts Centre. Um, we, 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 could, we, could, uh, we don't sell tickets. It's important to me that it's free. Um, I don't sponsorship. We get sponsorship um, from the Premier League for the um, event itself. Um, it's always been really important to me that there's no financial um, contribution needed from people in our community and those attending. I wouldn't like it to be a barrier. Um, in the Everything I do um, is for free in terms of opening the doors um, because, you know, in the past we've looked at with other initiatives charging as little to some people as five pounds. But the response from people within the community is some people can't afford that, that five pounds and the travel, etc., cetera, to, to, to attend the event. Okay. So we need to remove that barrier completely if oh, we can. Right. And fortunately, due to the support that we have from the Premier League in this occasion, other events, the FA, we can get rid of that barrier. Um, and make sure that people can just attend. Um, and we have all sections of the black community within the room um, doing all sorts of different incredible work. Um, there is no VIP area. Um, everybody is a VIP in the room, okay. so there is no VIP area. Um, and we learn from each other, we support each other, um, and we grow together. And the Football Blacklist has grown from an event 
15 years ago at the Houses of Parliament for 50 people. And so now, we've been going for over 15 years now. 15 years oh, now we've, we've, we've been running. And now our event holds 700 people. Um, and, oh, I mean, we could have 7,000. I mean, really, we could easily have 7,000 people. The next one might be also a real well, <laughs> maybe. If that's the right place, then, yeah. then absolutely. But for, for me, it's about the impact of what we're saying. It's about celebrating brilliant people. And it's about, you know, that next generation, okay. you know, really understanding that, you know, if they want to be a lawyer, if they want to be a doctor, if mm. they want to be a community worker, if they want to be a mental health practitioner, that they can work in football. Oh, right. And they are welcome and they are needed to make it as good as possible. So are you going to take it to another part of the world, this black place or what I just... No, I've had, had conversations around America. Um, there was a conversation around South Africa. Um, so, sorry? And the Caribbean as well. Well, yeah, I mean, essentially, the, 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 the list and the initiative works where there's the context of underrepresentation. Um, so that has to be the, the foundation okay. of... The, the work that we're doing. Um, so clearly, when you go to um, some countries across West Africa or kind of countries across the Caribbean, underrepresentation looks different. Mm. So in Jamaica, my island, I can say when you come and look at the people who are sitting in the equivalent of the Houses of Parliament and, and running the country, people are very fair skinned. And that's not representative of the people that you will have across the country of Jamaica. Um, in fact, the people who are fairer skinned are a very small minority. Um, but actually, somehow, while they are people of black heritage, um, you know, they are the people that appear to be running the country. So for me, that kind of equates to colorism and you know, while I'm not an expert in it in Jamaica, I think those are things that need to be looked at and considered um, and thought through. Um, I'm sure in other parts of the world it might attain to a particular kind of ethnicity. A particular ethnic group might be the group that is leading. Um, but actually, when you consider the makeup of a country, is the leadership of the country representative of all of the people and if you apply those principles to football then you can have a list looking at underrepresentation in all those areas but for us right now what we're working on is underrepresentation um, in football in this country um, and um, certainly sports like the NBA NFL you know they will have challenges that I believe a blacklist initiative may well be able to help them with yeah, I mean, um, first and foremost, please have a look on um, Twitter, or is it called X now? Um, at Footy Blacklist okay. um, is, is our handle. Or just type in Football Blacklist to the search engine on, um, on, on X or Twitter or Twitter Instagram. Um, check, check out our channels. Um, if anyone is interested in reaching out to me direct, um, you know, YouTube account as well. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got social media accounts just in my name, Leon, L-E-O-N, underscore man. Okay. And that's on Twitter and X and also on um, Instagram. Um, so if anyone wants to reach out, those are the best means to do so. Thank you, Mr. Leon. Nice talking to you. Yeah, lovely talking to you, my man. Nice.